Hi, my name is Stephen McGee, and I'm the author of Toxic Electricity. We're here to talk about the subject of toxic electricity, and that is plant growth defects. And you'll notice that I have many plants, all in various stages of growth defects. And over here on the left is what the plant should look like, and over here on the right is the extreme deformities that they show. So all of these plants are actually the Diefenbachia strain of plants and they come in a number of varieties but it's quite typical to see the leaves on the Diefenbachia looking like this. So you can see a very dark green border and a light green interior and some mottled patterns between the inside and outside of the leaf. And this is another variety of the Diefenbachia, so we have an almost white interior and a lighter green border on the outside. So these two plants have yet to show any deformities in my house, they haven't been in the house very long. But this one right here is showing deformities. So this is an original leaf of the plant and this is what's going to to replace it. So one of the things that you'll notice is the new leaves are quite shiny compared to the old leaves. You know, generally the leaves on this Dagenbachia plant are quite dull. So you can see this has got a shiny finish to the leaf. And it's quite typical of electromagnetic radiation exposure. You can see the leaf is much rounder instead of this long, large leaf. It's got a much smaller, rounder leaf. So, once these plants have been in my house for a while, they start to look like this. So these are control plants that we're looking at right now. This one's a few years old, and as you can see, it's largely lost the patterning. And the leaves have gone green, and they've gone shiny. I'll just put my hand by it so you can get some perspective. So, the leaves are much smaller. And this growth pattern is repeatable. You see it in many of the plants that I have in the house. And this one is looking slightly better. It's still got some of the patterning on the interior, but you can see it's very deformed compared to this and this. And here's the next level of deformity. So you see that the leaves have gone very shiny. They've lost the patterning and they're very small in comparison to what they should look like. So this row right here is very deformed compared to where it should be. So this one at the back, this was grown in an office environment with electronic fluorescent lighting and wireless networking. And you can see that it's got very, very deformed growth. And the branching structure is different as well. So coming forward, this one, so uh, this is one of the leaves that grew during the change. It's probably going to drop this and I'm going to end up with all this shiny dark green leaf growth. And this one's quite interesting because this was grown on my kitchen table where I would run my electromagnetic experiments. And you can see that the leaves on this one are very, very tiny. This one got a wide range of electromagnetic exposures. So it has a very unique plant growth on it. And I want to talk about this one here and this one here because these two plants were actually grown inadvertently in the fields of this. Now most people will recognize this as an outdoor weather station monitor that you get on temperature sensors and weather stations. So you have an indoor device and you have the outdoor device. Now this is the outdoor device and it transmits radio frequencies every several seconds and it does that continually. And these plants were within several feet of that device. And this is the growth that they're showing. So it's very, very deformed. Now this is the oldest of the two. You can see it's got this very small leaf growth. 
and this is the younger one and this one has spent more time outdoors so being outdoors seems to have affected the way it grows but I expect this one to start growing like this one eventually. So I actually regard these little wireless weather station and temperature monitors that you mount on the outdoor of your house to be quite toxic and I I don't have these anymore. They're, based on what I saw in these plants, I think there's some cellular development problems around these devices and particularly if you've got developing babies and children in your house you probably shouldn't have these. So let's go on to this row. Now this is a very interesting row of plants because they're all showing the same type of deformity. Now if you review my videos you'll see a video and that particular video is about plant growth deformities around electronic lighting products and street lighting products and they all have a very similar growth. They were grown for about two weeks each one under artificial lighting products. And you can see that the leaf growth is very, very unusual and small and it doesn't really resemble the original plant. So I actually regard most forms of lighting products to be quite toxic and in particular regarding these plants, these were grown under sodium street lighting, compact fluorescent lighting and also LED lighting and all of them deformed. So this probably is the most concerning row. Now the back three plants were grown around smoke detectors. And this was the control plant. This control plant, if you review my smoke detector video, you'll see that this control plant did actually get irradiated by smoke detectors during the original video because it was on the table with the smoke detectors that were around these plants. And they've all died. So there's something very strange going on regarding the radiation output of smoke detectors. And I should add that the smoke detectors that these were grown around didn't have any batteries in. So the only energy source that could have done this damage to these plants was the radiation source inside the smoke detectors. And that radiation is called americium. And americium is reprocessed nuclear fuel from a nuclear reactor. So this appears to be what americium does to plants. It appears to be very, very harmful to the Diefenbacher. And this one here, this one died a long time ago. But this is the only other plant that I've had die other than the smoke detector plants. And if you review my videos, you'll find a video that basically has a plant inside foil. So I shielded this plant with standard tin foil, so it was electromagnetically shielded, and the top of the plant was peeking out of the foil. And when I removed that foil, the plant, within about two months, died. And I assumed that it got so radiation deficient that the surge in radiation from removing that foil killed it. So that was a very interesting outcome. So that's the different levels of growth defects that I've observed in the Diefenbachia plant to date. And as I get more information on the growth defects of these plants in electromagnetic fields, I will post more videos. I hope you enjoyed this video and I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.